epidemiologist when I grow up. And I got it at 18, and I said, who was that kid? <laughs> and then I went into biomedical engineering, finished my undergrad, then I went, I really, really, that was my passion, and went back and did my master's and will be finished my PhD in it. Um, so I'm really happy to talk about epidemiology. And I know you're probably thinking, what is that? Yes. Do we have any guesses? Yeah, what do you think? The study of diseases. That is perfect. So did you ever, everybody hear what she said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The study of diseases. Yes, yeah, so we're looking at the, the diseases, what are, what's occurring in our neighborhoods, how people are getting the, the diseases, what are some risk factors. What do you think a risk factor is? It's a word we throw out all the time. We think it's something uh, everyone knows, but it's not true. What do you think? It's a tough word. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like dangerous things or things that might, might make it more likely you get the disease. And when we say diseases, we often talk about infectious diseases. Like, what's an infectious disease? It's a big word, too. Right? Diseases we give to each other, but what's a good example? Yeah. Um, um, something not healthy. Something not healthy. That is a great definition for a disease. Yes. Do you guys know an example? A very common one we all get. What do you think? Pneumonia. Pneumonia is a very good example. Yeah, pneumonia. Can, a lot of things can cause pneumonia, and most of them are infectious diseases. But we also look at chronic. Well, what, what example do you have? Pink eye. Yeah, conjunctivitis. Yes. I'm sure some of you have had it before. It's very, very common. It goes through schools very quickly. Um, we also look at chronic diseases. Does, do you guys know what chronic disease is? This is something you don't get from another person. It's something you get usually over the long term. That's where you get the word chronic. It's like things like cancer, things like the Alzheimer's. Have you guys ever heard those words before? Yep. Cancer, I'm sure. So what I wanted to go through is sort of on a day-to-day, -day, what might I be doing and how do I, and what do I do to help the health of our community in Pasadena. So as you can imagine, I was an engineer undergrad, not an artist. <laughs> so this is my best attempt at like a little storybook to get through. And then as you see, I'm much more reliant on props. So I'm going to have some volunteers help me throughout the day, okay? And I'll try to do this. If I don't do it, please make sure I make sure I show you all of them, okay? So working as an epidemiologist. So we just talked about what an epidemiologist is. They're looking at different diseases, risk factors, those things that cause us to more likely to get diseases in our communities. Um, on a day-to-day, -day, we could be expected to look at data. What is data? You guys ever heard that term yet? What do you think it is? Um, computer, like what, like searches? Yeah, we, so the, his answer was looking at uh, data on the computer, looking through the different evidence that's on there. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on the computer. I won't lie. So we're looking at different little information points that are inside the computer, and that's how we identify different um, diseases. Um, we also do research, and we write scientific papers. Does anyone, has anyone ever seen a scientific paper? I find them very interesting, yeah. But they tend to be very boring to people. <laughs> They're really fun, I promise. When you get older, you'll start to really enjoy them. But one thing that people don't realize is epidemiologists, we are very good at math, but we also have to write. So I know a lot of people, as they get older, they think math people don't have to write. But if you can't convey it through written language, it, the results never get published. So it's really important. So we, do, we also do math. We also do writing. And then we investigate outbreaks. What's an outbreak? Yeah. Um, like I think that's a great example. Yeah. So a, an outbreak could be when there's an increased amount of a disease in a certain area, like you mentioned in Africa. What was a big outbreak that just happened that came out of Africa? There are three countries particularly affected. Yeah? Ebola. Ebola. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about it, but Ebola was a very rare example of a large outbreak that affected many, many countries. So we're going to walk through what it's like to do an outbreak investigation. You guys excited? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking for a lot of volunteers, so be prepared. Yeah. Um, I'm not able to jog my memory right now, but wasn't there an outbreak in 
San Diego recently of something. I can't remember what it was. I'm just, yes. It's more just to say they're not just outbreaks a. overseas. Yes, it's a hepatitis A. Yeah, thank you. They we will, we are, are, so I can give that, I can talk a little bit more at the end about hepatitis A, but that is a disease that is spread from person to person, and there is a very good vaccine for it. So right now in the city of Pasadena, we are trying to give out as many as we possibly can to people who are homeless because they are the ones that are most affected by this disease right now. Uh, we don't have any cases here, so be rest assured. Um, but we are doing all, our, all we can to make sure it doesn't spread. Yeah. But right now it's LA County, San Diego County, and Santa Cruz that are affected. Okay. So this happens to me all the time. One day I'll get a call, and it's usually from a person who sounds very, very sick. And the first thing they tell me is, I'm sick and I need your help. Have you guys ever had been sick before? It's pretty miserable, right? That's awful, yeah. Once I threw up when my mom was picking me up from school. It's the worst, right? <laughs> throw up in, I hate throwing up. And you know what, I investigate throw up outbreaks all the time in schools. <laughs> Can you imagine what it's like to call and ask people about their throw up? <laughs> Well, I do. I do it all the time. So what I do is I always ask, how did you get sick and where? So we start asking questions, right? So within a few hours, I start receiving similar calls. And this is usually how I know an outbreak is coming. People all call with same symptoms. What's a symptom? Yeah. Well, let's see. Back in the back. I've been asking you. It depends what it is. For this, it's like, um, like you have a, a spirit. Disease that a lot of people have, I guess. Yeah, so it's like a disease and then it's certain things, some certain um, conditions associated with disease. So like the flu, what's a symptom of the flu? We've all had the flu, I'm sure. Throwing up. Throwing up sometimes, yes, actually. What else? What else is a symptom of the flu? Fever, yes. High fever is usually associated, what do you think? Headache is a big one. Almost everybody gets the headache when they have the flu. Yeah, so that's an example of a symptom. And so when I go, when I'm looking at an outbreak, those symptoms are telling me a story. So I want to know what might this outbreak be. So I had a question for you. What would you want to ask in an outbreak if people started calling you? What are some, what's some information you might be interested in? What do you think? There's no wrong answer. I ask a lot of really crazy questions. What were you eating is a very good question, and we'll, we'll give examples of why. As you can see, I've got some food on here. <laughs> what else What else might you ask? Are you a prank caller? Are you a prank caller? <laughs> <laughs> you know how right you are? <laughs> I get a call like that all the time. Sometimes it's just because they want the restaurant to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually a really good point. So a lot of times they'll have to call their doctor to confirm that they were actually sick. Very good. Do you want an internship? <laughs> what else do you guys think? What else? What are some of the questions? So like I say, what are some things you might want to know before you do the, yeah, what do you think? What are some recent activities you did before getting sick? That was so important. Did you guys all hear that? What were some activities? Why is activity important? We talked about eating as an activity and food, but what are some other activities that might cause you to get sick? It's illness. Yeah, what do you think? Like playing in the dirt and stuff. Playing in the dirt. Yeah, there's a lot of diseases that you can get from touching the ground and then putting it in your mouth. In fact, I brought an example. So we'll talk about paper, paper, parasites, but a tapeworm is a good example where you touch something on the ground and you put it in your mouth and then you'll get sick. So this is an example of what looks like a very large worm that goes into your intestine. And this is a real, so you guys can come up and look at it after. But this is a tapeworm. That is a real tapeworm. What's another chronic disease that you get from putting something in your mouth? You guys might, this is a tough one. Have you guys ever heard of lead poisoning? Yeah. So that's very common, especially in children who eat um, eat the rocks or dirt or paint chips in their homes. It's got paint, lead. What's lead? Yeah, what's lead? It is a poisonous metal. Yeah, humans can't really get rid of it out of their body, so it tends to accumulate, or you get more and more and more of it, and that will get you sick. It's a very serious public health problem. And so we do monitor it regularly at our health department. Yeah. 
what some other activities we would be interested in. You mentioned a little bit about Africa. What's something that we might worry about? Traveling. Traveling, yeah. We have some diseases here in, in um, Los Angeles County that we call endemic, which means local. It's a local disease. But there are a lot of diseases that are in other countries that are in ours. Do you have any examples? We talked about one. Yeah. Diabetes. Diabetes, that, that's a good one. Hold, can you hold that one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a big one. That's a global problem we see everywhere right now. And we'll talk about what that is. What's a, but what's a disease we might get in a different country that we don't have here in the United malaria. States? Malaria. Yes, and we're going to talk a little bit about malaria. I brought a little <laughs> mosquito. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not about the plague. And the plague. So, so does everyone know what the plague is? Yep. The plague is very special in public health. Does anyone ever heard of the bubonic plague or the great plague or the black death? Yeah. It's all the same thing. It killed millions and millions of people during the Middle Ages. Um, we actually still have the plague. But does anyone know why it's not as big of a deal now than it was then? Vaccines? Not vaccines, but so close, so close. What do you think? We have medications called antibiotics. We can treat it. So that's really important. But we still do have plague every once in a while. So those are some really good questions. Now you brought up diabetes. Why is diabetes another? So what is diabetes, first off? Yeah, does anyone know? No, you can That's diarrhea. Yeah. The other D. We've got a lot of D's in public health. Yeah. Um, I think diabetes is when you eat a lot of junk food. That's an interesting... So, junk food can, tends to have a lot of sugar and can cause other problems in your body that can then lead to diabetes. It's one of the risk factors, as is family. If your family has it, you tend to have it. It's called hereditary. Um, but what it is, is is a chronic disease where your body can't process sugar regularly anymore. And so it tends to cause people to die very young, and it, you have to do a lot of things to make sure you stay healthy. But you can do a lot of behavior modifications to stay healthy. Um, but I won't be focusing on today, because typically when we talk about outbreaks, we talk about infectious diseases, not those chronic diseases. But not always. Okay, so we talked a little bit about what questions we might ask. but. Something we might want to know is basic um, disease biology. So how many of you have ever heard of a bacteria? Yeah. Do you guys have any examples of what a bacteria is? And then I'll explain what it is. Um, a bacteria is something that could be something good or something harmful. That is a very good answer. So his answer was there are some bacteria that are good and some that are bad, and it's they're everywhere, right? So what they are is they're a different type of life, so they're not multicellular like us, meaning we're full of these little small cells. This is a little cell right here, right? So bacteria can cause disease, or they can just live in our gut. And we've got millions on our skin, we have a million inside of our intestines, inside of our little guts. Um, and they can cause disease, though, if they're a certain type. Does anyone have an example of a bacteria that causes a disease in humans? Yeah. Um, pneumonia. Pneumonia. There is a bacterial pneumonia. Mm -hmm. There's also viral pneumonia too. And silent pneumonia. And silent pneumonia. Yeah. yeah. So what is it? Any examples? We talked a little bit about big ones. They usually cause outbreaks in food. What do you think? Cancer. Cancer. We talked about cancer being um, a uh, chronic disease. And some bacteria can cause cancer, um, but we won't get into that. Yeah, what do you think? E. coli. E. coli is a great example. The king of bacteria is E. coli, yeah. It causes a lot of foodborne illness in the year. So usually when we get an outbreak, it's usually E. coli or another famous one, salmonella. You guys ever heard of salmonella? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I ate a chicken. Yes. So I didn't bring a chicken today because I looked through my dog's toys. <laughs> These are my little memories. And they were selling Halloween toys at the, the dollar store, but they didn't have a chicken. So yeah, chickens. What else can you get from a chicken? It's a virus. What do you think? 
Yeah, so I can hear someone say it. Bird flu, the avian flu, yes. You can get that from being close to chickens and ducks. So what's a virus? Does anyone have it? A virus is similar to bacteria in that we have back, some viruses that don't do anything to humans, and then some that do cause disease. And basically, they're a little chemical structure that go inside, and depending on how they, they work, they can, they can use our body against us. Um, a very famous virus is HIV. Have you guys ever heard of HIV? Um, we talked about the flu as a virus, so the bird flu is a good example. There's also a swine flu. What does swine mean? Pig. Pig, yes. And a fun fact, um, in the state of California, what do you guys know what a ferret is? Yes. Yes, we can't have ferrets in the state of California. And part of the reason is because is they make the flu, human flu, way worse. So some states still allow them, but when they get the flu, they make it way more strong. They call them the amplifier. And so we ban them in the state of California in part because of that. So don't get a ferret, please. <laughs> That's sad. They're so cute. They are so cute. I agree. But some animals, though cute, shouldn't be in the home. <laughs> um, so those are viruses. Unless you guys have another example, we'll go through a little bit in here. Any other viruses? Um, what about the superbugs? Superbugs, that's a great, has, who's ever heard of a superbug? Superbug, yeah? It's a big problem right now for public health. In fact, we're trying to figure out what to do. So a superbug refers usually to these bacteria. And what bacteria does is it, it, it grows very quickly and it learns. So then fortunately what might happen is if you treat it with those antibiotics, that's that medicine that we use against these. If you use it incorrectly or you don't use enough of it, that bacteria says, nope, I know this, I'm not gonna respond to it, and I'm gonna keep living anyway. And so what ends up happening is we keep treating it with these different uh, medicines, and they stop working. And we develop these super bugs that can no longer be treated anymore. So just to let you know, we actually, it's required by law now to start reporting some of these superbugs and get into our hospitals so that public health can investigate them. Good point. Ten points to Gryffindor over there. <laughs> All right. So parasites. I showed you a tapeworm here. This is a paras an example of a very large parasite. They're usually microscopic. They're usually very, very small. This happens to be one of the larger ones. Do we know they, they look a lot like worms usually? Um, but they're not necessarily worms, they're, they just look like one. Now parasites, there's one very famous example. It comes in mosquitoes. Guess any guesses? Dengue fever is a virus, we just took a look at that, so, but good guess. It's one of the most, it kills almost uh, 750,000 people a year in the world. Malaria. Malaria is a very serious disease. But not in the United States, why? We talked about vaccines. travel, why? Not vaccines. It's something you guys do every year because you hate mosquitoes. What do you think? Not inoculation, not so close. You guys are, what do you think? Mosquito bites. Mosquito bites, we hate them, right? So what do we do? We, we use repellent. We have repellent, we use water, so we try to get rid of those standing water. We did a lot of spraying of insecticides very early in our country's history to get rid of those mosquitoes. And so we don't have a high prevalence, or we don't have a lot of malaria in the United States, but it's coming back. What? Mm. So because of our warmer weather, higher rainfall, what we are calling global climate change, we're starting to see those, bless you, tropical, did we all use <laughs> Public health, when we sneeze, we sneeze in the car. She did a great job. It was a great example of a good sneeze. Um, because of warming climate, we're seeing these mosquitoes come back up into the state of California. So we're trying to prevent mosquitoes, and you can all do your part. Right now it is West Nile virus season. Have you guys ever heard of West Nile virus? So we're trying to tell everybody, clean out your pots, clean if you've got standing water and tires, if you have screens that are open, seal those screens up because it does kill people. We have about eight deaths a year in the city of Pasadena from West Nile virus. It's a very serious disease. So West Nile virus was usually, it used to be on the East Coast and it spread all the way West. And now we have it and now it is considered a local disease. So 
we have a fountain, and I look inside, and you can see like the little um, the nymph. Or yeah, nymph the larvae. And so I'll give them a splash of bleach, and then they they don't have. I come back a couple days later, yeah. they're still there. They're, so we call them robust. <laughs> they're little, those little, the little larvae that they have, they look like little worms too. They are very resilient. So we usually recommend going to a store and buying things that are used for mosquito um, treatment in those water fountains, or just considering draining them and filling them with flowers instead. Um, I personally love the look of a water fountain. But because it's been so serious lately, especially with the threat of things like Zika, um, we, we don't have here in, the, in uh, the United States or in the state of California yet. But we do have the mosquitoes that are able to carry it. So I've, I've personally switched. So with that, I want to talk about where we can get food, but I need volunteers. So I need five volunteers.